Hi, this is Bob Wetterman from Best Incorporated in Chicago, Illinois. Today we are going to begin with our series on BGA Rework, a primer. In this set of videos, we will explain the BGA Rework process in a variety of different process steps. We'll be going through each one of those process steps in a separate video and may augment the series with others to further explain the BGA rework process and some of the anomalies one runs into with the BGA rework process. So let's get started. So the BGA rework process, a primer. We can see here that we've listed the different rework process steps that we'll be covering in this series. The first of which is the removal of a device. So let's get started. So the removal process is one by which we want to take a device off of a printed circuit board and not damage any nearby components or the laminate or any devices on the other side of the board. We have to make sure that we do this in a very controlled fashion. So what we see in this particular case in these, on these uh, photos in the slide set is here in the lower left we see a device being removed with care being taken not to disturb and shield to some extent the heat that's generated in the, in the removal process so that nearby components aren't damaged. And here we see another hot air rework source. So we are assuming in this series that we are going to be removing devices that are plastic in nature and that we will be using hot air. Hot air is the most common source in the United States and plastic packages are the most prolific. So we had to draw a box around this series somewhere so that's the that's the uh, scope of the work that we'll be talking about. And just like when we remove something or cut something in a human body, the first part of the removal process is making sure that we're removing the right thing. We don't want to have happen what happened to the surgeon in that he accidentally was not paying attention and operated on the wrong part. So how we mark that for rework is we use these rework stickers most commonly. So these particular devices that are marked on this photograph are those that will be removed and replaced. We can also use the reference designator. We see that up top here in the upper left hand corner. So the rework instructions may indicate to remove and replace in this particular case uh, U101. So that's assuming that we have a silk screen. We can also create work instructions. We can mark them up with Gerber's. Or most dangerously, we can get instructions from the customer verbally. But in any particular case, we need to know which device needs to be removed. We also need to bring the board up slowly to temperature and typically how this is done with is with bottom side heat. Here we use a controlled heat source and bring the bottom side of the board typically the secondary side up to temperature and for lead free solder alloys that's 150 to 160 degrees Celsius. We don't want the ramp rate to be too extreme because we may damage either the laminate or components on the secondary side. And again, we're trying to stay 150 to 160 C. Modern rework stations have multi-zone bottom side heaters, and we see that in front of us here, whereby we have a gross bottom side heater that heats the bottom side of the board using one thermal profile and then we may have a nozzle which directs a hot air stream 
directly in the in the area that we are going to rework. So essentially we've created a multiple zone bottom side heating situation. We want the board to be a little bit smaller than the bottom side heater. That is to say we want to evenly heat the entire secondary side of the board. We also want to make sure that we take care in the removal process by knowing whether or not we are going to be saving the device, i.e. for reliability testing or back to the manufacturer, or we may be saving the dice for, for device for further reballing later. Um, but if we don't handle the device as a moisture sensitive device, we can see what can happen. Popcorning can break these wire bonds as indicated here by these, uh, these uh, broken uh, wire patterns that we see here. So unless we make sure that we handle the device and the board as a moisture sensitive device and component, we're going to get ourselves into trouble. Here we have another type of preheating system and typically we want to verify that we have the proper temperature not only right in the area in which we will be doing the rework but also that of the entire board. We're going to confirm that with thermal couples placed not only near the location of the device but also on the corners of the board. We also want to make sure that we prevent as much as possible the warping of the board and thereby we want to make sure that we have good stable rigid board holders on the bottom side of the device. We don't want them to be too massive and that's why you see a bunch of holes in this device because we don't want the thermal energy as imparted by the bottom side heater to be imparted into the holder but rather into the board. So when we have boards that have uneven ground planes or uneven copper distribution or very thin boards and in those two particular cases they may be more likely to warp or have a greater propensity to warp then we want to make sure that we have good board holders. Then as we heat the device up and we come down from the primary side to heat the device, in this particular case again we have this nice red rework sticker telling us which device is going to be removed. We are going to be heating the device again with hot air and we want to protect other nearby devices. Here we have some caps that can be impacted by heat. Here we have a connector header that could be deformed and rendered useless if we get hot air too close to it. So we are going to have to protect it. And sometimes we see metal shields, sometimes we see ceramic shields. In this particular case, what we have are thermal blankets in essence. These are quarter inch thick media that can uh, bring the temperatures down nicely to protect those components and they're taped to the board. We can also use water-soluble mask, um, though it does not have great thermal properties. Um, we can also create fixtures and pallets to protect nearby devices. We're still going to have conduction through the, through the ground plane, so the devices are going to heat up no matter how good we can shield. Here we see some of those other methods. In this case, um, this is a metal shield. Um, protecting nearby components, we can also use um, the, uh, the, the tape, the capped on tape, though, though tape really doesn't have the greatest of uh, properties with respect to insulating components. So there's a couple considerations as we create a profile, a time temperature characteristic curve, as seen here, um, to remove the device. Here we are plotting y at the y-axis is Celsius temperature, and the x-axis is uh, time in seconds. And so when we take the device off, we want to thermal couple the various points of uh, the board that are important. Now the assumption here is that we're just doing one or two at a time, 
and we don't have the luxury either time, dollars, or scrap material to create a solder sample. So we're going to have to learn in this removal process and do that learning via a thermal couple. So here we see taped in this bottom right hand picture, we see taped um, thermal couple on the underside of the device, one near the corner, and I'd probably put one uh, maybe on the a nearby component if this board were populated. And we will plot those. We will use either the uh, the profiling uh, equipment and logging function that's part of the rework station, or we will use a commercially available um, profiler such as a mole or a kick. And here during the time temperature characteristic curve on removal, typically we want to get in and out very quickly um, without damaging, again, the laminate or nearby components. And um, we want to make sure that we gain some information from the removal process. So here's a typical removal profile for tin lead solder. Here we've uh, we wanted the center of the board and the edge of the board um, measured. Again, the liquidus on the uh, tin lead profile for, for tin lead solder is 183 degrees, so we have to be above that liquidus for a set period of time until the device comes off. And we want to make sure that we are as consistent as possible, both in the center of the device as well as on the corners and edges. So that's a typical um, profile that we find for a tin lead solder. And then for a lead-free solder, we, again, we have 25 or so degrees Celsius higher in terms of a liquidus temperature. And we want to be above uh, that liquidus to pull the device off. We want to, again, also ensure the uh, that the ramp rate is kept consistent and it doesn't ramp too hard or we damage nearby components. Uh, with hot air systems, uh, one of the advantages is that you can really hit the accelerator pretty hard. In other words, the ramp rate uh, initially as you bring the board up to temperature can be pretty hot. You know, some systems get 7 to 9 degrees C per second. Um, the guidelines as put forth by IPC and most solder manufacturers is 3 degrees C per second. We want to make sure that the temperature across the component, um, the differences are held to a minimum, and we don't want to reflow any adjacent BGAs or other devices. So that's the removal process. And come back next as we talk about once the device is removed, that we need to prep or site dress. Thanks for joining us.